Welcome to the show. I'm Sarah Gonzalez. I'm here with my guest, John O'Keefe. John is well known in the Sarasota community for his skills as an actor, production designer, and voice actor. Welcome, John. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me on your show, or the show. This is a great opportunity, although um, I, I usually, as an actor, I usually have a script <laughs> when I'm on camera. So hopefully this open interview concept, I'll, I'll say the right thing. So. Yeah. Well, we'll get right. started with, um, describe what sparked your interest in film. Oh, film. Well, we all love movies and going to movies and watching uh, television shows and all. So, I mean, uh, I always thought it would be just fun to be a part of making one and, and being in one and being in front of the camera. So uh, I had the opportunity here in Sarasota to actually be a part of a major motion movie that came into town to film a scene at the Ringling Katazan Mansion a few years ago. And that just sparked my interest, and that's what really started it. It was kind of the catalyst for me venturing into the whole film industry here in Sarasota. Not really a big industry, but I'm telling you, uh, these past years, uh, I can see the momentum growing. That's great. So what steps did you take to become associated with the Sarasota film community? Uh, the motion picture that I'm talking about is Parker that came into town and that starred uh, Jennifer Lopez, uh, Jason Statham and some really Hollywood blockbuster people. Um, so I was actually on the set just as an extra. Again, I was just getting started. Um, that was my first gig uh, being in part. I've done other uh, projects and little plays and stuff and uh, fiddled with uh, video camcorders and stuff when I was a, a teenager. We had those huge camcorder things to go around. But I never really took it to the next level. Um, I went off and uh, did a regular career and a regular type of job, nine to five type of job. So um, this was new to me. But the moment that I stepped foot on the set of Parker, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And it kind of helped too because um, Taylor Hackford was the director, um, and I'll note that he is married to Helen Mirren, so these are some <laughs> really important people. Of course, the stardom kind of goes to your head, and that's kind of the allure of filmmaking, um, but I do know deep down that it's a lot of hard work to attain that type of stardom, and it doesn't happen that often in our smaller community that uh, major directors and movie stars come into our area, so you can tell that I was kind of <laughs> enamored by uh, all of that. Um, we had, it was a fancy party scene. We had the gentlemen were dressed in tux and the women in fancy gowns. And uh, that was um, just a moment of just a party excitement. Um, and it was a kind of a stunt scene too, the second day that we shot. We didn't really know that. We had to do uh, running. Uh, I'm kind of rambling on, but I'm sure you're finding this kind of interesting. <laughs> no, yeah. There's a lot of side stories. Is this show like two hours long? Because I could probably talk. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, that was the start. And I'm telling you, that was, uh, I, oh, actually, it's probably like four years ago. And since then, with the help of the students here at Suncoast Technical College and Bob Gray, your instructor, of uh, auditioning me to be in a small student film and uh, Ringling College, we have all this in our backyard, and it's great to see young people like yourself um, wanting to be a part of filmmaking. Um, and there's just so many creative aspects in the industry. I mean, actor, of course, is what I would like to pursue. But um, through that, I'm finding out that there's so many other channels that I can express my creativity. Yeah, um, there really is. It's, it's, it's exciting. All right, so what made you change your career, to, um, your career later in life? Um, actually, it really wasn't my choice. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was kind of the downturn of the economy. Um, I had a regular nine to five job. Well, actually, I was salary, so it was kind of like uh, nine to nine, but <laughs> that's another story too. Um, but I wanted to find something that was, again, more creative, um, more fun. And, um, and I had the opportunity where uh, I helped grow a company and then during the downturn of the economy, um, people were, of course, being laid off and stuff. I was offered a job within the company, but it was almost like my opportunity to go and start a new chapter of my life. So that's kind of, I took some time to do some soul searching and, and finding out what I really wanted to pursue. And that's when I opened the front page of our Sarasota Herald Tribune 
and on the front page they were looking for 300 extras for a motion <laughs> <laughs> picture um, and I'm like all right let's email and uh, and that's how really the start of it awesome so what advice would you give to future actors Wow um, this Acting is, is a, a step by step, uh, well, it's a journey, really. And that's really with any career, especially when you, when you change uh, career paths, uh, kind of like I did. I mean, I, w I was always kind of a ham in school and joked and kid and kidded around and, and liked to entertain and sort of the center of attention. But there was a side of me, too, that was also very shy. Um, so um, I think I'd never really pursued it. Um, seriously and this just gave me the excuse to to venture out to do that so going through that journey uh, when I come across people that ask me hey how do you get started you know what's the first step that I take um, you really uh, some people that I see I'm like hey you should be in front of the camera you should do this you know I'm like oh I'm kind of camera shy I don't you know this I get nervous and stuff like that. Um, and then there's other people are like, oh yes, I, I wanna do this, I wanna do this so bad, and they wanna do it so bad that they don't realize that they have to start somewhere. And the only place that you can start is start from where you're at. So some people use the excuse, oh, I don't have a headshot, I don't have a resume, I don't have um, the experience. You know, I don't even know anybody, I don't even know any filmmakers in the area, you know, how do I get started? Well, I was, that's where I was. I, I had no clue, but I was around 300 extras on a Hollywood motion picture. And so I just started asking questions. And I'm telling you, the very next day, um, after the wrapped, um, I set out to find out how to do this. How can I pursue that? And since then, I've been involved with, it's probably 100 short films, webisodes, commercials, uh, all kinds of uh, testimonials, documentaries. Wow. Um, so, the, um, Getting back to your question of what would I tell an actor to where to start. Start from where you're at. Just, uh, you have to, see everyone thinks that being an actor is you transform yourself into um, a different character. But that's physically impossible. You can't transform yourself into that. You have to be yourself. I mean, that's the key to it. You have to know yourself. You have to be comfortable um, in your own skin. You have to be comfortable um, on the set. You have to be true to yourself and trust yourself. So basically it's get to know yourself first. What do you have to offer? There's only one of me. There's only one of you in this world. And we're so individual but I think we, we get caught up with um, people judging us or commenting on us um, and that's you have to let that all go because when you put yourself in front of all these cameras and in front of people um, you, you really open yourself up and, um, and that's scary for some people. It's actually scary for me right now. <laughs> so. so I know that you are um, known to do some voice acting. Could you give us an example of what you have done? Uh, voice acting, um, a lot of people think that that's like creating character voices for like cartoons, which is really super cool and I, I haven't done that yet. That's kind of on my bucket list of something to do. Um, but voice acting is doing voiceovers for commercials, uh, documentaries, books on tape, uh, that type of thing. And again, I discovered um, a voice acting coach that uh, moved to Sarasota, Florida uh, from Washington, D.C. and settled in our little hometown here. And um, we did a one-on-one. -on -one. He offers a one-on-one -on -one course of how to read um, a script. And it's just amazing um, the number of times that I hear other people reading a script incorrectly because I've been trained to do that. So where that was beneficial to me was uh, going to a cold audition, a cold reading. Um, and that's where you go to an audition somewhere in front of casting directors and you're handed a script and you immediately have to figure out what the character is doing because it's only a portion of the script. Um, you have to figure out what the character is kind of doing and how to recite that. Um, too. So that has really opened up to properly recite and dictate the written word from the screenwriter and bring that character to life. And that's really what the actor's job is, is, is for me to bring that character to life. That's really great. Now, um, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? 
or share with us? Um, I think what's interesting about uh, being an actor and, and saying how we have to uh, bring that character to life uh, on the screen and for the director and for the storyteller, uh, which is interesting, but what I found out um, on the set, since that's my job, is it, what happens is on the set is um, I become very detailed oriented to figure out what my character should be wearing. Sometimes that's not supplied, especially like for student films and all. And the, the people, um, young students don't have access to wardrobe or costumes and that type of thing. So, but that helps me identify if I happen, if I'm playing the part of a doctor, well, most likely I'm going to wear a lab coat or scrubs or something like that. And then from that, um, I find critical props. Maybe the, my doctor has a special gold pen or something that's referred to in the script or a, a pocket watch or something. And that helps me extend and, and have something on the set to, to you know, sort of play with and interact with. Um, but I take it a little further than that, <laughs> as some of the filmmakers uh, can attest to. Um, uh, on one set, I actually brought my character's own wallpaper for the wall, just because I happen to have something. And then that's kind of where, um, and I didn't force it on the production, I just happened to throw it in my truck and brought it along with me, because I thought it would be fitting. And sure enough, I showed it to the director, and he was like, um, you know, I was like, I have this wallpaper, I think it would be kind of neat uh, for my character just behind me. And he's like, oh yes, we're going to use that and put that up on the wall. So uh, that happens. And one time, uh, another funny story is, um, we were doing a, a cemetery scene, um, but we lacked a cemetery. <laughs> now, who would have thought here in Florida <laughs> that we couldn't get, uh, the problem was we couldn't get a permit last minute to, to film in a cemetery, um, but the scene kind of needed it because um, I'm actually referring to someone that was buried. So I looked around my property and I actually had some uh, garden art, uh, yard art out there um, that I put in my car <laughs> and, uh, and brought for my character to, again, interact with. And we probably should have filmed the director that day when I opened the back of my truck and revealed what I had for them to use as, as set dressing um, because she was like quite shocked that I had headstones in my truck. <laughs> Don't ask me where I got those from. <laughs> no, actually, um, it was granite and marble statues, uh, very Ringling-esque type of things, mm. um, cherubs and stuff that from a distance, um, they look like, it looked like we were, we were actually filming in a cemetery. So that's where starting off as an actor, not knowing anything, and then it evolving into um, doing commercials, and I'm doing full production design for scenes in uh, films, um, which I thoroughly enjoy because it's just, I constantly, when I read a script, you're an actor, you have to be very uh, imaginative. I mean, you have to have a very vivid imagination because sometimes you're sitting like in a studio like this, but maybe the scene calls, if it's a uh, dramatic narrative, we're sitting uh, in a cottage on the edge of a cliff or something, and it's zero degrees out or something. So we have to imagine that. And um, so that's where my imagination when I read a script, when I'm involved with that, is I immediately take a pencil as I'm reading the script, and if it's referring to the gentleman reached for his letter opener, I'm like, okay, I need a letter opener for my character. Or he turned and lit a match on a candlestick, um, that type of thing. So I'm immediately uh, thinking and visualizing that. Like, wouldn't it be cool to have an old-fashioned candlestick that they would walk from room to room with because they didn't have electricity during those times or something? So that's where your imagination, you have to have a very vivid imagination. So John, if a director wants to contact you about working for set design or something, how would they go about that? Oh, sure. Um, I have a website. It's uh, johnokeefeactor.com. And um, that actually, it's always uh, an ongoing process to keep updating it. So hopefully I'll get that updated with uh, a lot of my before and after pictures from the production design and some of the newer characters that I've played in some of the dramatic films. So I'll. I'll be getting that, but it's johnokeefactor.com, okay. and they can get in touch with me. But I really appreciate you having me on the show. This is yeah, a, a, was, it was great having you. Absolutely, we'll do it again when I have uh, more interesting uh, 
projects uh, because you just <laughs> never know. <laughs> like I said, this is a journey, um, and it's just kind of cool the different uh, opportunities that, that come my way. So I appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you for joining us on the show. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, and we've had John O'Keefe here with us today. Join us next time.